As of version 4.26 in Unreal, the Chaos Physics System is the default physics solution. With that comes the Chaos Destruction System. So in this video, we're going to take a very quick and simple look at the basic steps you need to take to get an object working with the Chaos Destruction System. So this is a 4.26 preview build of Unreal. This means you can install this directly from the launcher and you no longer need to do the source builds to get the destruction system working. It's a completely empty project with no extra plugins. You may just want to check through the edit and plugins window that your install did come with all of the chaos systems installed. With that ready to go, all we need to do to get something working with the new system is to go to the modes panel here and go down to the fracture option. This will give you a new panel just next to the place actors, which we're gonna use in a second. And this will be where we handle all of the chaos fracturing and destruction. So with this, of course, you can use any kind of static mesh that you wanted. Normally you'd go for something like in all of the examples, they have buildings and kind of more interesting objects. For this though, I don't have any assets in the project. So I'm just going to take a kind of very simple way to get something working. And that is to drag in a cube from the place actors panel. I'm gonna put that in here and I'll just scale this up a little bit. So this will give us something slightly more interesting to work with. Once you have your static mesh ready to go, we now need to make this a destructible object. And to do that, we very simply, with the new panel which is opened here from the dropdown we chose a moment ago, we have the fracture and cluster options. Under the fracture option, we want to press new. This will give us the option to create a new geometry collection. You can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna leave this as the default name. This can take a few seconds to create this. And then once that's done, you will see that that has appeared in the folder that we selected. So this has now linked the geometry collection to the cube that we had in the scene. So if we make sure we have the cube selected, go back into the fracture menu and we can see here at the moment, it's just one single object, but this will provide all of the fracture and destruction information that we need. So to get this working, we now have some options along the right hand of the panel here. And this is giving you the option for the type of destruction you want to apply. So we can have a uniform, clustered, radial and so on. For demonstration, I found that either clustered or uniform work quite well. And then to the left hand with any of these selected, you get some fracture specific properties that you can change here. So things like the minimum and maximum Voronoi, which will be controlling how detailed the destruction is. Of course, the higher you take this, the more performance heavy this will be. So again, for demonstration purposes, I'll leave this fairly low. And just know that if you moved the object around or some of these don't show exactly where they're meant to be, changing something like one of these sliders will readjust the position of the kind of demo that you get of what you're gonna get at the end. This is especially useful for the uh, the bricks as I find this one doesn't show anywhere at all to begin with. And then once you start changing the height or something of the bricks, you will get a kind of demonstration here. So back with the uniform destruction, the last step is to press fracture. This will show you the pieces that this will crumble into. You've got the explode slider here, which will let you uh, quickly test what this will look like before even pressing play. So we can just slide this around to see the kind of destruction effects we're gonna get. And you can also select individual pieces and get some information about the object as a whole over here as well with some extra options that you can do with the destruction system, such as adding extra durability, mass, and things like that to affect how this will crumble and uh, how many hits that this will take. At the moment, this will just take a single collision. So if we simulate this, I just needed to move that up a little bit there, but uh, based on the force this is falling, this should just take one hit and that will completely crumble. So that is the basic steps to get the chaos system working. This will now, like I said, you have an asset here, which is connected to this cube. You can open this. And again, you get a lot more information of the types of collisions. Uh, you can see you can set the density and the mass and you can start refining and really fine tuning how this will collapse and the kind of effects it will have. You also have options for clustering and this is used for putting some of the larger parts together and saving on performance by chunking or clustering different chunks together. As I mentioned, this video was really intended just to be a kind of very first steps into using the chaos destruction system as it's a fairly new system and some people may just want to jump kind of headfirst and play around with things. So I'd only really had this topic planned. If you did want to see more, if you wanted to see some more in-depth details uh, kind of as a follow-up about how we can refine this add like i said extra durability so it will take several hits before this will collapse how you can uh, cluster things into different sections so you have to break through a bigger chunk to get that to then be destroyed into a smaller chunk then do let me know down in the comments below and i'll provide a follow-up video i'll leave this video here for now though and if you have enjoyed this or found this useful please do leave a like and share the video around that really helps the channel to grow and of course to get the information in front of as many people 
as possible. And of course, do consider subscribing if you'd like to be kept up to date with any of the re weekly releases on topics just like this on anything game dev related. Just wanted to say again, a really big thank you to all of the Patreon supporters scrolling down the side of the screen here, especially the longtime supporter, Tuna Hungry. A really big thank you again for all of your support, as it's the support from everyone over on the Patreon channel that allows me to keep creating and releasing these weekly videos. Hope you enjoyed this video. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.